I'm Jilly G. Welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how to make lemon sandwich cookies. Gluten free, of course. These cookies are exactly what they sound like. Lemon sandwich cookies. I've been making a lot of recipes lately with lemons. For some reason, I always want things with lemon in the springtime. It just feels so bright and sunshiny. So we've got the cookie dough that we're going to make and then we need to make the lemon filling. I'm actually going to make the lemon filling first, that way it has time to cool off. Although it doesn't really matter if you do it first or not because you still have to bake your cookies and let them cool off too. But it's just what I do, I make the filling first. But I do have everything else ready at room temperature. And I'm also going to preheat my oven to 400. And then I've got all of the ingredients for my lemon filling right here. But before we do that, I am going to mix my dry ingredients just so I can use this little container to put my lemon zest in. And then I am going to juice my lemon because the lemon juice goes in the filling as well. So this is just a quarter of a teaspoon of salt in with two cups of flour. That is it for the dry ingredients. Really nothing to it at all. And you don't even really need to mix that together, but it's a habit. So dry ingredients are done. And this is a little bit bigger of a grater than what you might want to use for a lemon zest, but it's what I've got. So use what you've got. And then I've got two lemons here. You never really know how juicy they're going to be. And we only need three tablespoons of lemon juice. So it's best to have two just in case. But I'm just going to zest my lemon. And you want to make sure to only get the yellow part. You don't want to go too far and get the white part. It's usually more bitter. And I try and get organic lemons when I can. And then of course I do wash them really good. We just need one teaspoon of zest. Make sure to get all of it. And this is more than one teaspoon. It really can be more or less depending on how lemony you want your lemon cookies to be. If you don't want to use the lemon zest, you can just use a teaspoon of lemon extract. So lemon zest can go over here and then I've just got my juicer and then we'll just see how much juice we get out of this lemon. Again, we need three tablespoons. And then I am going to strain it. We don't want any seeds in there. And I'm pretty sure that's not enough. So use your other lemon. If you don't have fresh lemons, you can use bottled lemon juice and it would be the same amount. So there's our lemon juice. And there's really not very many ingredients that go into the lemon filling either. And what I've got over here is I've got half a cup of water, I have a quarter cup of date sugar, two tablespoons of butter, two tablespoons of cornstarch, and then we just need a pinch of salt. So maybe an eighth of a teaspoon, just a pinch. And then of course our three tablespoons of lemon juice, but we're not ready for that yet. The reason I'm using date sugar today for the lemon filling is because I feel like the date sugar and lemon juice together, for some reason, it really seems to brighten up the lemon flavor. But you could use sugar or honey or whatever your preference is. But of course, the date sugar will make our filling a little bit darker. And I don't mind at all. And you can also add lemon zest to your filling as well. You don't have to just put it in the cookies. I prefer not to add any to the filling just so it stays a smooth texture for the filling. But you can if you want to for extra lemon flavor. So the first thing we're gonna do is cook our filling and I'm gonna add in our date sugar. And this is just a quarter cup of date sugar, pinch of salt, and our two tablespoons of cornstarch. I am gonna turn on the heat to about medium and just whisk this together. And it's all right if your date sugar is a little bit lumpy, it will dissolve. And while whisking, slowly add in a half a cup of water. And this really is such a small amount, you don't need this big of a saucepan. And we want to cook this stirring constantly until it comes up to a boil. And you can see it's already starting to thicken up. And once it starts to boil, boil and stir for one minute. have a hot pad and you saw how thick 
This really is. But don't worry, we still have to add in some butter and some lemon juice. So two tablespoons of butter, I'm just gonna dump all in and then just whisk it together. You want this residual heat to melt the butter before we pour in our lemon juice. My oven is ready. Once you've got your butter all stirred in, add in three tablespoons of lemon juice. And mix this together till it's really combined. And you might have thought it would never come together because it looked really kind of chunky, but look how smooth and creamy it looks now. Get a spatula so you can scrape the pan. And it's not a super brown color, but not exactly a bright lemon yellow color either. You could add yellow food coloring to this if you want to. And then I've got a piece of plastic wrap, just so it doesn't develop a skin. Stirring in that butter and the lemon juice really help to cool it off. But you don't want it to get a skin, then it, it's a little bit harder to pipe in a piping bag to fill our cookies. So set that aside. So we already mixed our dry ingredients. The only other ingredients for the cookies is butter, honey, an egg, and of course our lemon zest. So I've got one cup of butter that's at really soft room temperature. Mix this together with our quarter cup of honey. As always, I'll give you the equivalence to sugar. In fact, this cookie recipe, it calls for powdered sugar, not regular white sugar. And if you wanted to, you could just use date sugar instead of honey in the cookie recipe as well. And then just give this a really good mix. You want this to be really combined. And this is the exact right temperature of butter. You want it to be really soft, but not melting. And once you've got that really combined, add in your one egg and give this a really good mix. I'm gonna add in my one teaspoon. It might even be closer to a tablespoon of lemon zest and give this a really good mix. And now for our dry ingredients, all in there, I've switched to my spatula. And stir this till it's really combined. Scraping the bowl as you go, sides and bottom. bring it all to the side of the bowl. It just makes it easier to use my cookie scoop. Then all of the dough is right here. If you feel like your dough is too soft to work with, you can stick it in the fridge. You could even have made this yesterday. Wrap in plastic wrap and stick in the fridge. If you don't have a cookie scoop, you can just use a spoon and scoop out equal amounts of dough and roll into a ball. And then I've got two cookie sheets here lined with parchment paper and my cooling racks are under there as well. And this is, oh, it's almost a one inch across cookie scoop. I think it holds a little over a teaspoon. But you can make these cookies as big as you want. I prefer to make them on the small side just because they're a nice little bite-sized cookie. And then I just get a level scoop full and then just place them on our cookie sheet. And once you've got all of your cookies into a ball or have used your cookie scoop, you wanna just flatten them out just a little bit. And I find that just using my finger to flatten them out 
is all you really need. You could use a cup or something like that, but sometimes they stick to the bottom of a cup. I'm gonna set this cookie sheet over here while I get my next one ready. If you don't want to use parchment paper, it would be an ungreased cookie sheet. Now that I have two trays ready to go in the oven, they'll go in again at 400 for about eight to 10 minutes. I always start out with eight, and then if they need a few more minutes, we can do that. And if you have extra cookie sheets, go ahead and get those ready. It's my last pan of cookies to come out of the oven. You want them to be just golden brown around the edges. One of my favorite things about these cookies is they're very similar to shortbread. A lemon shortbread, but if you like shortbread, you'll like these cookies. So you want them to cool off. In fact, these, these ones back here are more cooled off, and you want them to be golden brown on the bottom. You'll see just golden brown around the edges, but then if you turn it over, it is golden brown. And then I usually line them up on my cookie sheet. Again, we're making sandwich cookies. And so I'll line them up in pairs. And it looks like I have one cookie that won't have a mate. And that's the one that I will eat. If you don't want to make these into sandwich cookies, you could have made them into thumbprint cookies and just made a little divot in your cookie before you bake them. And then you can fill it with your filling. And because these ones just came out of the oven, I'll start on this cooling rack first. And then I've got them lined up in rows just so I know that I have enough to make the little sandwiches. And I'll just give them a quick look and see if any of them are kind of mismatched in shape or size. And these all look pretty good. It doesn't have to be exact. So then I'll just take one of the, one of the rows and flip them over. That way I know which ones will be the top and which ones will be the bottom. If you put two pans of cookies in the oven at the same time and your oven is like mine, you'll notice some of these are darker than the other ones. And that is because my bottom rack and my top rack in the oven cook a little bit differently. And by the time we get these ones filled, these ones will be cool enough that we can put filling on them as well. So bring back your filling. And it's okay if it's room temperature. You don't want it hot. You don't want it to be ice cold either. And give it a good stir. Because of that cornstarch in there, I don't even want to say a jelly-like consistency, but it does have that texture that cornstarch gives it rather than a frosting or a buttercream. And then I just have a glass and then a pastry bag. You don't have to use a pastry bag, but I find it's the fastest, easiest way to get them all filled. So just fill up your pastry bag. If this mixture was really warm, it would be a lot harder to handle in a pastry bag. And again, same thing, if it's ice cold out of the fridge, it might be a little bit firmer than you want it to be to squish it out of a pastry bag. This is a disposable pastry bag that I reuse. And if you already have a hole cut in there, be careful when you're twisting your bag to not squish your filling out before you're ready for it. I always get a little bit nervous when I'm making sandwich cookies because I feel like I won't have enough filling. But it really is enough. And then to make sure, I put a little bit on each one and then I can always go back and add more. But this way you know for sure you have enough for all of your cookies. I just put a little bit in the middle to begin with. 
You see how fast and easy a pastry bag makes this job. And once you've got filling on all of them, except for my little half over here, I'll put some filling on the top there. But now we haven't even used half of our filling. So again, being nervous, there was no cause for being nervous because we have plenty. So I'm just gonna go back and start adding more. And I like to put it right in the middle so you can make a sandwich and it will squish out to the edges. And I'm just going about the same amount that I went before. And this filling does firm up a little bit in the fridge. In fact, I've got quite a bit extra filling left over. I don't want to fill them any more than this because I think it will all squish out too much. And then just put them together. And I press them together just a little bit to get that filling to the edges of the cookies. You saw how fast and easy these came together. Nothing fancy at all. But they sure are cute little cookies. So now that all of our cookies have all been sandwiched together, I'm going to eat this one that doesn't have a mate. But I'll break it apart and show you what it looks like on the inside. Just like a lemon shortbread. So good. Now let me try a bite with the filling. Such a bright lemony cookie. And this filling, it's it's almost the texture of a of a cream pie or a, a lemon meringue pie where that cornstarch is what holds it together so it will hold a slice. Although it's a softer filling than a lemon meringue pie. But it's a very similar texture, but it's really perfect with these cookies. And if you've ever had shortbread before, where they're kind of a crumbly cookie already, but with a bright lemon flavor, and then this filling is just perfect to go with it. Let me know what your favorite cookies are. Shortbread is one of my top favorite cookies. Of course, this isn't shortbread. Maybe I should make my shortbread, which is also in my cookbook. But these are so similar to a shortbread cookie, just with a lemon flavor. And if you didn't want to make your filling with lemon, you could make these orange cookies or even lime cookies. Or you could just make the cookies that are lemon and put any flavor of filling inside that you want or no filling at all, just eat them plain. They're that good. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Go ahead and hit the like button if you haven't done that already. If you have any questions or comments, let me know and I'll see you on the next one.